<laughs> All right, welcome back, guys. This is going to be the 11th installment of the Web Security Academy Lab Walkthrough Series. Uh, today, we're going to be starting the Blind SQL Injection Labs. Uh, these are going to be a little bit more difficult than the previous labs. Uh, they require some more foundational knowledge about SQL injection. Uh, so if you haven't completed the other labs before this, I would highly recommend going back and doing those um, because this is going to build off everything that we've already done from this point forward. Um, and you'll probably end up not really understanding what's going on or you will, uh, you'll just end up throwing code at this machine following along and not necessarily get what's going on. So I, I would recommend to go back and do those. Um, however, uh, I'm gonna go into a little bit of background on SQL injection or blind SQL injection, uh, not too much, because Portswigger already has a lot of this content laid out uh, in the readings. Um, however, I do think we need to touch on a couple things. Uh, just we're going to do it uh, with a demonstration here. Um, so I have the lab pulled up here. Um, and one thing that you noticed uh, in the previous SQL injection labs was that when we would uh, send our response to try to enumerate things, we would get a response back that would explicitly tell us that there was an error happening. Now, a lot of times that's not necessarily going to be realistic because um, these developers uh, are smarter than that, and they know that that can be used against them. So they'll, uh, they'll turn those errors off so you won't get it. However, uh, blind SQL injection is, uh, it's when that parameter or um, input is still vulnerable to SQL injection. Um, we can just kind of elicit a different type of behavior um, out of the web application after, uh, after we send it, although we're not getting a like specific error on the back end. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. Uh, this isn't necessarily going to be a walk through the lab right now. This is just a little bit of a demonstration of the differences. So what we'll go ahead and do is pull up Burp Suite and turn the intercept on. Um, I'm just gonna reload the page because the SQL injection is not in the categories parameter this time. It's gonna be in the tracking ID. So we'll go ahead and send this to repeater and turn the intercept off and then come over here to set our SQL injection up. So um, previously, what we were doing is we would do something like a union select statement. So we do like union select and then so on and so forth. We do nulls. Um, you guys know how that works. However, this time that's not going to work. Um, so how, we're going to keep that first initial uh, a single quotation to close it off. Um, but we are going to use booleans to see if this uh, string is injectable. And one way we can do that is we can do and, uh, we'll put one in quotations, and then we'll open up with another one like this. And what we're going to do, you're going to say, well, why use and, and then a condition that's always true. So this is just testing to see if the parameter is injectable to begin with. Um, because if this is true, and this is true, we're going to get the correct behavior out of the application. And then we'll also use something inverse. We'll do like and one equals two to see if that comes back false. So let's go ahead and do the false condition first because I'll show you guys the difference here. We'll send this in. And what you can see is that we do get an OK response. Um, however, um, what we see right now is we see that there's a welcome back. And that means that this is a valid cookie. So if we go back and then this is false, so this is true and this is false, this and is going to evaluate the false because for this to be true, both conditions have to be true. So if we go ahead and look for this welcome back string, we're not going to find it. See, zero matches in the response. However, if we go ahead and we do one equals one, both of these conditions should be true. This is a valid tracking ID and then this is a valid expression. This is a true expression. So this should all evaluate to true. And then we can see if we're going to have an injectable parameter here. Now we see that there's a match. So we go ahead and hit enter and we see that this is welcome back. So that means that this is a valid cookie and it evaluated this, which means this is injectable. So you guys can see the difference there. So if we have a false condition, which previously would have given us a 500 error, 
we still get an HTTP 200 OK response. So that's going to make this, you know, it, it's more difficult to enumerate things because you're not getting um, a direct response back to you. You can't see it happening in real time. So that's just a little bit of uh, an introduction as to what we'll be working with uh, blind SQL injection. And then with that, we'll go ahead and uh, get right into the lab. All right, so jumping into the lab, there's a couple things that we need to go through first. And those are just the assumptions that this lab is making. Uh, those are important to understanding how this is solved. So they are going to straight up tell you in the lab description that there is a user called administrator um, and that there is a table called users. And within that table, uh, there's two columns called username and password. So knowing those, uh, we don't need to enumerate any of that information. We're just going to uh, attack it for what it is. Um, we're going to intercept another request here. So let's, we'll just start from scratch, turn the intercept on, refresh the home page, grab our fresh request, send it over to repeater, and turn the intercept off. So we're actually gonna take this request um, and we're gonna send it to intruder. So we're gonna do that with command I, um, control I if you're on Windows. So it'll take you to this target tab uh, we're going to go over to positions and you'll see the request that we just sent over. The first thing that you're going to want to do is clear um, the automatic uh, targets that the intruder thought uh, was the right positions um, because that's not true. Um, we don't want those right now. We're going to set our own. So as mentioned, the tracking ID um, is where the SQL injection is at and that's what we saw beforehand. So the first thing that we need to do, since we know that there is the user administrator on this box, is we need to figure out how long the password is of the administrator. Uh, and we can do that by eliciting the same behavior um, and looking for that welcome back string on a true, uh, true condition. So to do this, um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to comment out or we're going to end string on that tracking ID we're going to do and um, parentheses we're going to select um, the letter a from users is the table that they told us exists we're going to narrow our search with a where clause um, we're going to do where username so we're looking in that username column so where the username is equal to administrator. Uh, we'll close that string um, and then we're going to do and. We're going to use this length function. So it's length no space open parentheses uh, password and then we'll that's we're just passing password as the parameter to the length function so whoops i added one too many d's there so we're uh using this length function we're checking the length of the password column specifically for the username administrator so this is fetching the pass the length of the password for the administrator and we're going to check if that is greater than one we're going to end this parentheses that we opened here. So this is all going to be evaluated at once. So we're going to end that and then we're going to do it equal to close the string and then A. So let's let's talk about what's going on here first. So this is the first first condition and this is going to be our valid tracking ID. So we have one true condition here. We're going to be anding, if that's a word, we're going to be using the and boolean evaluator to make sure, so we're only going to be getting a, uh, a, two, a good response or the response that we're looking for if both this condition and this whole condition are both true at the same time. So let's look at what this one's doing. So this is selecting A from users where the username is administrator and the length of the password is greater than one. So what's important here to really look at is this username where we're selecting from the table users, uh, specifically the administrator user, 
and then the length we're checking we're going to iterate over the number or the length of the password starting at one so to do that we want to highlight this number one click on this add and you're going to see it's going to put these like fancy looking s kind of characters around the number one that's what we want because this is going to be the um this is going to be the number that changes the intruder basically automates sending a bunch of requests all at one time so uh, now that we have that set, we want to make sure that this increases every single time that we send the request. So to do that, we'll come over. So this is our first payload. So you can think of what's inside of our S's as a payload. So we'll come over to the payload tabs. Um, this is the first, this is our one and only payload. Uh, we're gonna change this from simple list to numbers. So this is gonna start at one and um, if they're super secure, they're going to have a password length of 30, potentially. So this is going to go from 1, it's going to change that 1 that we have inside those S's, and it's going to go all the way up to 30, and we want to make sure it's stepping by 1 each time. So what this is going to do is it's going to go 1, it's going to send the request with a 1, it's going to send the request with a 2, send the request with a 3, so on and so forth. However, um, if we ran this right now, all we would see is a bunch of 200 requests or 200 responses back, right? Because um, it's going to send us the same response back no matter what. We just need to differentiate if that welcome string is uh, present in the response. So to do that, we can come over to this options tab right up here. Um, we're going to click on options. We're going to come down to grep match, um, and we're going to clear the grep match. Then we're going to add... So type, we're just gonna type welcome. You could type the whole welcome back, so let's, let's just do that, just so you guys see. So we're gonna copy this welcome back string. We're gonna come back over to Burp Suite, paste that welcome back string into grep match and click add. So we see that's gonna look for welcome back. So basically what this is doing is it's going to send that, um, it's gonna send this and then each time that we have that it elicits a welcome back um, it's going to give us a check mark or like a one it's going to give us some indication whether uh, the length of the password is still correct um, and we're going to try to go up to 30 there might be more than 30 characters there might not so let's go ahead and click start attack and then you'll see this is what we'll look, what we're looking like so you're going to see all of these responses are 200s which is to be expected except for, so we start at password length zero, that's true, it's greater than zero, it's greater than one, greater than two, so on and so forth, and we're gonna see that denoted by this one that shows up. That means that that's a true condition um, when it searched for this welcome back string, I can show you. So it's gonna say welcome back equals one, all the way up to 20. So it wasn't greater than 20, um, if you do greater or equal then, uh, you would get a one on this 20, but that means that the password is 20 characters long. Okay, so now that we are back at uh, the intruder screen with the same request, um, this was set to sniper, um, but the next thing that we're gonna do is change this to cluster bomb. So sniper is when there's one payload, and that's when you highlight one thing. Cluster bomb, there'll be two payloads, um, and you'll see why we're gonna need two payloads in just one second. So now that we know that there is a password and it's 20 characters long, um, what we can do is iterate over each um, position in that 20 character string of the password and try to retrieve uh, what character is at each position. So you'll see we need a one payload for the position of the string and then we also need um, a second payload to be all of the alphanumeric characters. So to do that, to iterate over the entire substring, um, what we'll do is we're gonna do this and again, um, we're gonna get a space, we're gonna do select, um, and then just like I said, we're gonna use this function called substring. So substring is going to basically break up whatever string you're looking at and let you count over each character within the string. So we'll look at substring um, we're going to pass pa the password to substring because that's the uh, string that we want to kind of divvy up. Uh, we're going to start with one, one, 
close that off, and then we're going to select the password from the users table. Um, we're going to do where the username is equal to administrator. Close that off. Um, close the original open parentheses that we opened with this expression right there. And then we are going to do equals and then an A once again. So what we'll be doing here is the first payload that we need to highlight is this one right here. So it's password one one. We want the first one. We'll click add. So we want this to be a payload because that's gonna that's the uh, that's the position that's gonna allow us to step incrementally over each uh, character in the string that we're retrieving. The second payload that we want to set is this A right at the end here. And that is going to actually be the character that we're retrieving from the string. So we want to add that. Um, and just make a mental note that this is our first uh, first payload and that this is our second payload. They kind of go um, left to right here. So what we'll do is now that we have our uh, SQL injection set up um, and you can kind of see what we're doing here, uh, we're going to come over to payloads uh, and we're going to set this up. So payload one is it's going to start out as simple list, but we want to change it to numbers. Um, we want to take, we want to start at the number one, go all the way to 20 since we know that it's a 20 character uh, password. We want to step over each uh, character within the string, so we'll set this to one, and that is going to set up our index. The next thing we want to do is we want to go over to the second payload, so that's in this top thing here, you're just going to go down to two, and then we want to go to simple list. So I'll clear this so you guys can see what's going on here. Um, we are going to go down to the payload options. This is where we're going to set what our list is. Um, we're going to add from list. We're, it, this, uh, this lab tells us to assume that it's just lowercase characters and number 0 to 9. So what you should if, see if you just do add from list, click the lowercase a to z. Um, you'll see that populates a to z all on one line. But we also need 0 to 9. So let's go ahead and add 0 to 9 there. Make sure that these are all in a row. And they should be. So the first payload should be the numbers 1 to 20, stepping incrementally each time. The second payload is going to be all the letters, num all the letters and numbers A to Z, 0 to 9. Then we want to make sure that our GRET match is still working because each time that a character is selected from the index that it's at, so stepping through the string. Um, we want to make sure that it's matching on this welcome back true condition. So we should be able to build the password um, each time that welcome back is hit. So once this is all set up, we can go ahead and start the attack. I'm going to start the attack and then I'm going to cut over to once the attack is finished because this is going to take a, a few seconds, especially if you're on the community version because this is going to be throttled a little bit. Um, however, this is the quickest way that I know of to complete this lab. Um, so go ahead, let this run, um, and we'll, be, we'll jump back together once this is finished here. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, this has just finished running for me, and we're going to go ahead and check this out. So what you can see already is that um, a lot of these aren't hitting, and then that we have so, uh, occasionally have one that's going to trigger the welcome back uh, response to match on it. So we want to make sure we're paying attention to this welcome back category over here. And one thing that you can do, we want to see all 20 hits uh, for welcome back. Um, and there, this was sent a lot of requests. I want to say it was 750 something. Um, so this would take a while to kind of scroll through and find each of them and then go back and forth. So you can just double click on this welcome back um, and it'll show all the 20 that hit. Um, and just to prove it to you, there are 20 here. Um, and then the rest of them are non-hits. So we're first going to filter by all these that um, matched. And then what you can kind of see here is that um, this is the letter that matched and that this is the position that it matched in the password. So we can see that there was an A as the ninth character, an A as the 11th character, A as the 13th, C as the 19th, E as the second character, um, except for this is going to be a little like sporadic, kind of hard to put together, right? So what we can do is this. 
we want to filter by the position. Okay, so we got the uh, position to filter here. Um, we have all the matches and then the order that they are in. So just to show you guys, this is 1 to 20. We have matches here, and this is the password, all in sequence. So if we go ahead um, and pull this over to the side, um, we can go to my account, and now we should be able to log in as the administrator. So we can do administrator, um, and then pull up the password here. So we have a zero is the first one. E is the second one. Um, so on and so forth. I'll get back with you guys once these are all typed in. Okay, so uh, we finished up typing that in there um, and we went through and as you can see uh, this solved the lab um, again this is not exactly how uh, this is going to uh, this is going to show so this is not going to show uh, how to solve this that's that's not the uh, default way to solve this however i think it automates a lot of the uh, the elbow grease in this lab and you still kind of get the same result out of it um, so we'll build off of this and uh, keep going on some more blind SQL injection here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful.